This video is about the trapezium rule. The trapezium rule is a way of estimating the area under the graph by splitting it up into trapeziums. So I've got a graph here. I'm going to show you how it works before we move on to the question. So we could work out the area of each one separately. That would be longer. But luckily, there's a shorter way um, by simplifying it. So let's have a look at how we do that first. Each of the trapeziums is going to have the same width. So I'm going to call that W. And I'm going to just call this height here, H1. The second one, H2. The third one, H3. The fourth one, H4. And the fifth one, we'll call that H5. So to work out the area of a trapezium, we average of these two sides so we half their sum so we do h1 plus h2 over 2 so the average of these two sides times the width and then we do that for each trapezium so h2 plus h3 over 2 times the width for the second one h3 plus h 4 over 2 times the width for the third one and finally h4 plus h5 over 2 times the width for the last one so that's what we want to do so how can we simplify this so you see each one is multiplied by the width so if i take that width out i'll try and get it on one line this time so if i take the width out that leaves me with h1 plus h2 over 2, plus h2 plus h3 over 2, plus h3 plus h4 over 2, plus h4 plus h5 over 2. So I can simplify that even more if I actually half all these and see what's left. So that leaves me with half of h1 plus half of h2 plus another half of h2 plus half of h3 plus another half of h3 plus half of h4 plus another half of h4 plus a half of h5 so simplifying that even further for the last time that leaves me with just half of h1 but i've got a whole H2, a whole H3, a whole H4, there, and half a H5. So, to do the trapezium rule, this is all we need to do. So, we need to put the width outside the bracket, so whatever the gap is here, in this case, one, half this one, half this one, and add all these numbers up multiply it by the width so you half this one half the first and the last ones add them all up and multiply by the width that works out the area of all the trapeziums together so let's have a look at that in practice now so we need to find the y values first so we've got an equation y equals x squared plus one so zero squared plus one that's one one squared plus one 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 squared plus 1, 4 plus 1 is 5, 3 squared plus 1, 9 plus 1 is 10, and 4 squared plus 1, 16 plus 1 is 17. So to work out the area of these trapeziums, we don't have to work them out individually. We're just going to go, what's the width here? It's 1. Going to half the first one. Add the second one, the third one, the fourth one, and half the last one. Type that into the calculator. So we've got 26. So that we've got 26 units squared. So that's an approximation. It's not the exact. It's an approximation of the area underneath that curve. It's actually going to be an overestimate because... You can see it creates little spaces 
in between the trapeziums and the actual curve. So the curve is going underneath the trapeziums. So it's an overestimate. So that's an overestimate of the exact area. If we made the trapezium smaller, so if we did every 0 0.5, so say we made more trapeziums in here, we get a more accurate answer. And the smaller you make them, the more accurate it become. So this one's an overestimate. Okay, here we've got another trapezium rule question. So this time we've got the graph y equals 1 over x, which you should know forms that kind of shape. And we've got these x values we've been given. So we're going to estimate the area under this graph between when x is 1 and when x is 3. And we're going to do that by splitting it up into trapeziums with a width of 0 0.5. So if we fill out the table first, so y equals 1 over x, so 1 over 1, that's 1. 1 over 1.5, that's 2 thirds, so you can have 0 0.6 recurring or 2 thirds. 1 over 2, half or 0 0.5. 1 over 2.5, you can have 2 fifths or 0 0.4. And 1 over 3, one third or 0 0.3 recurring. So now we've got the values filled out. So now we're going to apply the trapezium rule. So we're going to look at what it's going up in, what the width of, e of each trapezium, and that's 0 0.5. So we're going to have 0 0.5 outside the bracket. And then we're going to half the first one, add all the ones in between. So add all the ones in the middle, and we're going to half the last one. Then we just need to type that into the calculator and see what comes up. So I've got an answer of 67 over 60, or to three significant figures, 1.12. If we were asked if it's an overestimate or an underestimate, if you look at where the trapeziums would go, the trapeziums would go over the curve. So that makes it an overestimate because of that extra space that we've included that we didn't need to. So that'd be an overestimate if we were asked. Okay, here's another question. So um, pause the video, have a go at this one. Um, this time we've got y equals 2 to the power of x. So if you can work out the area underneath using the trapezium rule or an estimate for the area underneath and whether it's an overestimate or an underestimate. Okay, so 2 to the power of x. So 2 to the power of 0, that's going to be 1. 2 to the power of 0 0.5. 2 to the power of 0 0.5. So that gives us, if we do an all to three significant figures, 1.41. One. 2 to the power of 1 is 2. 2 to the power of 1.5, 2.83. 2 squared is 4. 2 to the power of 2.5 is 5.8. 6, 6 to three significant figures again and 2 cubed is 8. So we're going to look at the width of the trapezium. So the width is 0 0.5. So we're going to take the 0 0.5 outside the bracket. We're going to half the first one, add on all the ones in the middle. And half the last one. We're going to type it into the calculator, and I've got out 10.2. So 10.2, that's with the rounded numbers. If you've used more accurate numbers, you may have got a more accurate answer than that. I've got 10.2 units squared. Now, is it an overestimate or an underestimate? So 2 to the power of x takes this shape. 
So are the trapeziums going over or under the curve? So, well, it's a super sized trapezium, but it makes the point. It's an overestimate. So we'll, we'll have an overestimate. It will be over the exact area under that curve.